can control our shit. Yes, so you know, I know. I saw it too. Trust me, I spent two hours last night. We're good. Okay. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to the February 20th meeting of the Board of Selectmen at Town Hall at 8.30 a.m. Um, before you have the uh, agenda for today's meeting, could I get a motion to approve today's agenda? Someone. Steve. Second. Amy. Um, and then, and it's unanimous, sorry. And then moving on to the minutes, could I get a motion to approve the minutes from the regular meeting held on February 6th? So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Okay. Public comments. Members of the public are welcome to provide comments to the Board of Selectmen on agenda topics scheduled for review and or vote. Comments submitted electronically should be sent to the following email address, bosdistribution at newcananct.gov. Is there anyone who wishes to make any comments? Okay, moving on then. Um, Waveney Art Fair, approval of uh, permission by the Arts Center to have an art fair. In Hillary, oh, there we go. Good, I wasn't sure where you were. Hi, Hillary. Hi, sorry, I couldn't be there in person. No um, but the Carriage Barn Arts Center um, would like approval to host our second annual Waveney Park Arts Festival, which we held last year for the first time, which was a huge success. Um, the festival is open to the community. It's a free event. Um, we coordinate um, artists' performances, workshops for kids, um, artist demonstrations, as well as the exhibit and sale of painting, sculpture, photography, handmade jewelry, ceramics. Um, the Carriage Barn does a jurying process to select the artists who apply to be a part of this. And each each of them have a 10 by 10 display pace, uh, display area, um, which is all set up in the sort of vicinity outside the Carriage Barn, um, around the courtyard of the Carriage Barn, up to the Waveney, to the uh, Powerhouse Theater, and also the parking circle above the uh, powerhouse uh, parking area. So this would require a temporary closure of just the portion of the road that sort of leads down the hill towards the carriage barn from eight to five. The festival would be from, from uh, 10 to four. Uh, the attendance would be about 75 people at all time, including the, the participating artists and volunteers who are helping and then probably around 100 to 150 guests per hour based on last year. Um, the uh, Carriage Barn files a special event permit with the town. We also provide our insurance rider coverage to the town of New Canaan. Um, we produce all of the directional signage for parking and attendees in the park to uh, just direct people that day. There were no issues last year with, with parking or anything. Um, the restrooms at both the Carriage Barn and the Powerhouse Theater are available for attendees and um, any garbage that was generated was, was um, disposed of at the Carriage Barn's dumpster. Um, I don't know if you all have the, the sort of one sheet, but on the second page is just uh, a few highlights from last year. We do, in addition, uh, partner with several other community nonprofits to give them the opportunity to be a part of this and sort of highlight their organizations as well. Great, um, thank you. Um, do we have any questions from board? I have, I just have um, one. Uh, do you foresee any need for uh, police uh, coverage that at that event? Um, I do not. Um, Last year, we had a, a very good, strong turnout. It was a beautiful day. We had probably a thousand people throughout the day. And um, yeah, there really were were no issues. Uh, uh, John Howe and his crew put out the um, uh, barriers that we just set up in the morning um, at each end of the road. And um, there, there were no issues with that. So I, I don't think that would be necessary. And maybe maybe we just um, you touch base with like Ross Kimes or somebody um, just so, you know, God forbid there's anything happens there. We'd love to yeah. be able to make sure that we have belts and suspenders yeah. and everybody's planful okay. for anything like that. Um, okay. But I, I love the idea. I grew up going to these things. It's it, it's, you know, nice to see that we're bringing it here into our community. It's a great um, 
you know, a great community event. So thank you so much for all your efforts in putting this together. So thanks. Okay. Hey, Hillary, order up the same kind of day, Hillary. Same I weather. Know. <laughs> I know. I know. I put it in my calendar already, both days. So <laughs> great. Uh, yeah, I think it's great. Um, so if I could get a motion to approve permission for the Carriage Barn Art Center to host a one-time art fair in Waveney Park on Sunday, October 6th, with a rain date of October 13th, 2024, in which artwork will be available for purchase. So moved. Steve, second, Amy, it's unanimous. Thank you very much, Delary. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, New Canaan Farmer's Market, uh, Alexis Gazi. 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 Are you there, Alexi? I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. So why don't you tell us, uh, I guess you're seeking approval to once again host the farmer's market and um, allow for off-season pickup of uh, merchandise through December, through March 29th. Any any updates you want to give us? Uh, the farmers and the vendors are actually anxiously getting ready to get out there and be back to the community. This will be our 26th season, so that's a a pretty good um, achievement to have a farmer's market that long. And we've expected to increase the market this year a little bit with a few extra vendors. We love the nonprofits in the town and we're expanding to maybe a nonprofit or two from the Connecticut to get Connecticut uh, organizations involved and the artisans love to come out people have um, really given us a good uh, support through the years so we'd like to be back and also the carriage barn we're celebrating spring march 3rd to give a plug to the carriage barn hillary is great we've um had a this will be our second brunch so we hope everybody joins us. Any questions? You know, how does it work with vendors? Can vendors, do, do they have to pay to be a vendor? Do they just sign up to be a vendor? I mean, just, I just, how does it, I know it's been around for a while. I was just curious how it actually func functions from a logistical standpoint. You know, is it first come first serve or is it, you know, in terms of setting up and stuff like that? Well, I do have a waiting list of uh, vendors inquire through email and I send them an application. First, I ask them if they do have qualifications to be at the market. And one of the qualifications is they need to be a Connecticut business. And also if they have insurance and proper licensing. And then if they do qualify and there is a space and their items are complementary to what we already offer, then I send them an application and then we go from there. Uh, the fees are minimal. I try to keep them at a minimal. I work on a shoestring budget um, because a lot of the small businesses are are hurting and you know we all have to stay alive. So I manage the market as minimally as I can. And um, they come and they set up and they we all obey our rules as much as we can and everybody gets along and it's a great time oh yeah no it's it's terrific i was just wondering the logistics of how it worked you know somebody pay for the season uh do they pay for certain space um in terms of they basically i could send you an application so that you know what what the market is all about but they do pay for um they're seasonal for the whole year, every other week. And then I do have a gal who only sells dahlias. So she only comes for four weeks. So okay. I work around that. Um, the artisans, they can come three times per year, limiting once a month. Last year was kind of hard with all the rain. So I ended up um, having your people doubling up because of the issues with the rain and getting rained right. out. So they had uh, rain dates, but I'm flexible with vendors for the most part. Great, I'd, lo I'd love to see the application just to understand how it works, but it's it's such sure. a, it's 
anything for the town. I'm just I'm just kind of curious the logistics. Thank All you. the farmers and the food vendors have to supply an application to the health department, and that's seventy five dollars. Just okay. to give you an idea, for the whole year for a farmer, a ten by ten space is um, four hundred dollars for thirty four weeks. Um, for a ten by ten tent and. The vendors usually have two or three, the farmers. Uh, a non-farmer is 500 for a 10 by 10 tent for the whole year. So if you break it down minimally, it's less than $20 per week. And that covers the cost of insurance, uh, social media. Um, I do a mailing list every year. So it basically meets the expenses. How do you how do you dole out like who gets what spot? Uh, well, we've been doing this so long that the um, the regular vendors have their um, spot from previous years, and we keep that that way. And then as I have vendors pull out, then there's empty spaces for new vendors. Lexi, one of the things that it's amazing how folks going in and out of the lumber yard lot it's very very organized there's plenty of parking there how did when when the when the peak times come i know we've had a police presence there once in a while how does that get triggered is it just give do you know how many people are going to come on any given weekend or or does that just happen sort of automatically well with that parking lot we haven't had a need for um traffic director since once in a while once there. in a while there once in a while with Stuart's there and and going you know up and down there have been once in a while someone has stopped to try to move traffic along because it does back up there but that's only on really peak peak days so but you Probably. don't you don't you don't trigger that then um we haven't monitored it because nobody's brought it to my attention that it was a problem oh it's not a problem it's just i was just wondering about the, like there's certain weekends that are really busy there and others that aren't. So it's, it, I'm just bringing it up as a question of who, how, do, how does that actually work? But I guess if somebody observes it, they just, uh, somebody comes in and moves, moves traffic along, but that's fine. It's, you're doing a great, you're doing a great job. Thank you. We have three entrances and exits in that parking lot. So that is a huge help. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? If not, then I will ask for a motion to approve a request from Alexis Gazzy. Gazzy, market master to hold the, that's quite a title, market master. I like that. <laughs> to hold the summer New Canaan Farmers Market at the Lumberyard parking lot on Saturdays, 10 to 2 p.m. from April 20th, 2024 to December 21st, 2024, and to allow off-season pickup only in the same location through March 29th, 2025. Motion to approve. So Second. Amy, it's unanimous. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you. Happy New Year. You too. Um, okay. Can I get fire testing consortium? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, what we have is uh, a contract, a no-cost contract, uh, that I was asked to um, enter into with firefighter app but they're really called police <laughs> app uh, so uh what this is our connecticut uh testing consortium decided to partner with firefighter app to increase uh, uh candidate number and diversity uh and everything that goes with hiring and getting the uh, firefighter testing out there as far as knowing it's happening so they um chose to uh, use a firefighter app which very minimal cost to the candidate uh for them to get into the process and then take the test. The, the testing is also on the cost of the candidate. So the police app felt that the towns involved would need to uh, sign a contract. So what they don't want is um, us to start taking our own applications and taking the funding away from them since the chief's organization is not paying them for anything. It's all coming, the cost all comes from the candidate. The pro their profit comes from the candidate. So that's really what the contract is saying is that we can't go ahead and do our own applications and charge for them. Have we always charged candidates to apply to be? Uh, we, or is this, well, is this, the, this app 
imposing a cost to people who want to be a firefighter that wasn't there before? Well, um, consortium's been, there are about four rounds of testing now. They've always charged the candidates. Uh, I don't know what New Canaan did prior to going to the consortium. I'm not sure if there was a small fee mm -hmm. for them, but there's usually always a charge on them. By us going, by the chief's organization, going with police app and we're using uh, fire police service testing for the actual test, it's really reduced the cost of the candidate. So that's what one of the goals of the uh, Connecticut chiefs was that's good. to reduce that cost. But there is an administration. Yeah. I know. You, I was, have yeah. to, you have to review it. You have to. Right. You know. I was just worried that, you know, apps, they don't do them for the so philanthropic reason. I just wanted to make sure that this wasn't something that was, you know, putting barriers up to people who wanted to be a firefighter. No, uh, this is uh, the chiefs have been working actively to try to reduce that and increase the numbers and including the diversity on the testing process. I so, mean, what, what about privacy and the information that goes in there? How does that? You know, how does the how is the candidate protected in the town protected? Is there a uh, I as far as the police apps handling all of their data? Yeah. And um, once the testing company finishes the testing process, they're going to pass on the results to firefighter apps. So the the actual privacy, I probably can't speak of for them. Um, but then what happens is all as I see is the department, all the departments will see a list. Uh, three lists, depending on what category they're in, that we can select off of. And all it has is their, it, it has their uh, name and address and contact information. That's and all we see. We did have legal review this just because it's a new. Yeah, the contract is, but that is probably above and beyond. the pri I would think that privacy question is bigger than, than that. The contract yeah. Is. Okay. Yeah, just all these but, apps, they're collecting all the data and that's how they make their money. Yeah, that's and just cool. uh, as a uh, captain just whispered to me that the, the police department's been using police app for a while for uh, New Canaan police testing. Uh, and that was one of the reasons why uh, back and forth with uh, legal, because we didn't want to, we want to make sure that our agreement with them isn't affecting the police department and what they do. So that's why a couple of things got changed in here. Do you know what a while means? Like how long? Like for the police will. For the police app? How long, how long you guys been using yeah. this? Uh, at least a couple of years. And I it's been good? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's been great. It's, it's a huge reduction on our resources to try to run these tests. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's great. Said they pull the candidates together. You give them parameters for, for test score-wise. They gather together and present it to you, and then you go from there. Okay. Yeah. Norwalk used it for uh, their la last two tests now, and they had over 1,200 applicants. Uh, wow. A very diverse group um, that this company is able to reach out and bring those people in, which is great. Yeah, you know, right. bringing up ton, you know, tons of uh, people in to take the test. Okay. So basically asking permission, I, it's a docu sign that they asked me to sign. Uh, that's kind of the permission I'm asking is just to go ahead with that agreement based on legal changes. And so we are. Any, any questions? No. All right, so could I get a motion to approve a request from the fire chief for approval to enter into an agreement with policeapp.com doing business as firefighterapp.com to facilitate the employment application process at no cost to the town of New Canaan for a period of three years from effective date? So much. Second. Steve, it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, All right. Um, Russ and Albie, Triban Radios. One of our favorite subjects. I'll start. <laughs> so, um, and this is we're, basically we're looking, we're finally at the point to ask for approval of uh, purchase of our uh, tri band radios. Um, Six months. Yeah, it's, it's been a, a, a lot of hurdles, you know, with the state's communication of uh, people to get there. Uh, based on our budgets, the fire department's going to ask for five tri band radios from Northeastern. Communication not to exceed uh, 49,500 and OEM is three and then two that are going to the fire department. And that was approved by the Board of Selectmen. It's a transfer from cost savings, uh, board of finance, sorry, yeah. cost savings from our fuel trailer project. Thanks to the folks at Highway, they found ways we could save a bunch of money on that. And so it is a, was a budgetary transfer from that line to the support fire. So ultimately, we're going to have seven radios in the fire service, which is taking care of all our on-duty people, especially, when, you know, the key thing is when they go mutual aid uh, to have these radios. Uh, one for myself, 
and then one of mine is going to stay with me. So yeah, whether we're in the fire hat or yeah, the OEM yeah. hat. Okay. And thanks to the state, it was a long your, process. Uh, I want to do your cost request on that. Yeah, the same uh, forty nine thousand five hundred because I'm it's three plus two for him. They're coming out of my budget. Uh, and a thanks to the state communications team. I mean, it's been a long six months, but uh, we managed to successfully get approvals signed across 11 towns in Fairfield County for us to everyone to share uh, their radio frequency. So, we so everyone's going to talk now. Well, we'll be able to talk to everyone else. Yeah. Uh, they also, <laughs> the nice thing about this project that I was leading for the last, I guess it's been a year, yeah, is that true. they also will be able to program everyone else's frequencies, including ours, uh, which was a, a mighty project where we got it done and signed by all of them executives and chiefs across the region. And then these radios are actually capable of doing it, which is the benefit of the all band. Did the technology change in six months? Only kidding, um, with the radio. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask that question. Probably, I mean, yeah, every time we ask them, the price goes up, so we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're moving. In this, the money's in already budgeted. Okay. Yeah, it's a couple, a couple of years of capital um, right. on my side. Okay. and. Um, yeah, we ended up selling some old equipment that was not serviceable anymore. That's also paying for that. And it's going to go into this. This may be above your pay grade, but we've over the years we've talked about this, the different emergency towers in town and how things are bouncing off. Are, is are these radios capable of operating without that, or do they need? Are they relying on those towers that we currently have? There are two answers to that question. The first is um, because of the fact that it'll be programmed with a number eleven different towns worth of stuff plus state and federal interoperability frequencies, we, we will be able to use our regular day-to-day -day police, fire, EMS, public works, certain infrastructure, which we own as a town. And then because it is all band, uh, our infrastructure is on 155 megahertz. Regular radios can't talk on the 800 megahertz that is the state's system. These can't. So even if our infrastructure, for whatever reason, we've actually had a couple times in the last year where a fiber line got cut, uh, there were issues, this would mean these radios could just flip right over to a, the state backbone and use the UASI system, which we contribute with, uh, as do all the towns in the region, uh, as a fallback. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so I have a question about, so you have a request for five tri-bands and five all-bands. Why are we even... Uh, it's just different terminology. Okay. Same thing. All the same. Tri -band, it's the same. It's the bands. same. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Following up on Steve's question, because when, when you're not in the weeds in this, it, it, it gets confused. Would it be possible to do a summary page for us, us to be like, here are our communication radios, and we have met this, you know, have this many of these, and they work off this. We have this many of these, and it work off. Just so people, because I know we've been trying to figure it out over time, and I get a little lost in terms of what it is, but it might be just great for me to say, okay, with this, we have X, Y, and Z, and that would just be just a, a summary. Yeah. For, and I think everyone might be and curious about that. And yeah, across the country. I yeah. have most of the data already because I went and did inventory as part yeah. of that. And if you could do it in a way that's like for, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. for dummies, <laughs> you know, like uh, please commu our community, yeah. emergency communication for dummies, just like we have this, we pay for this, and it's going off these towers, right? And then we have these, and yep. that would be great. Happily, yeah, happily. And all of the stuff that we've owned up to this point can only talk on our own infrastructure, that one band of our town and district. I think the first ones that are capable of doing multiple. Yeah. So, well, so with that's, I mean, the point to carry on this cell idea is that it, the redundancy has given us the opportunity to say, hey, we're finally away from some of the issues that we've had with putting up. Right. Uh, more of these towers, which would be great if that's the case. Well, are, are we are we saying that using these radios and the issues we've had with dead spots in town, the the fire truck getting stuck in that you know in that hurricane yeah. in that time and all? I mean, where are we with that? I mean, will these radios solve that type of issue? The day to day operations for police, fire, and EMS remain on our stand, our core one fifty five band, which is what we have. Uh, fire probably has, I guess, 40 radios. Police has probably 70 or 60 that are single band radios for our town infrastructure. So their dispatch centers, the person is sitting answering the phone, working the radios are all set for that one band. Um, and within that band, it covers like dead spots, right? Our coverage for our public safety radios is actually very good at okay. the system right. we have now. On the, as opposed to, I think that's where people get confused to separate the conversation about cell coverage exactly. versus public safety radios. Our public safety radios which was a redone 
five years ago or so is actually very good coverage for us. The only downside is, is we pay to maintain that infrastructure with the, the bonded item that I go with every year, which is the Motorola agreement. For right. 150. So it means that because we own the equipment, we own the servers, we own the software, we have to keep it up to date and or do this replacement program, which is why longer term, maybe it makes sense to go to the state infrastructure where they own the equipment, they own mm -hmm. the stuff, but it'll be a big capital because all of those radios, because either the first ones we've ever bought that can talk on this other band that the state is on, uh, we have to replace all the equipment we have now to be able to use it. So we're waiting to see how Wilton and Norwalk, how it goes for them. Yeah, so the, the, are the, these radios do not fix the question you asked. You, so but, if, we, if we had a crash of our system, those five, seven radios would be able to operate on another system right. to keep that minimal but we won't have enough of them for everybody to, right. to talk. So we won't, yeah, it doesn't fix that issue. But if we did have enough for everybody to talk to, would we fix the issue, I guess, is the question. Uh, in that case, just like I said, we might be looking at, we're on a whole different system. Yeah, because yeah. there's so, two, yeah. there's, these are too expensive to give one to everybody. I, yeah, yes. yes. I would never recommend buying all the apps for every single person because they're just too expensive. Yeah. And if you were to go that approach, you would get single bands for most of the troops. And then these are the ones you get for management. That the ability that they can work interoperably with leaders who are coming in to help us, but not something you should buy for every single police officer. Right, and that's how we're, you know, fire departments operate in that way now. Our all our members have their own radio, but they don't need the tri band because if they're off duty coming back for a call here, or the engine goes out of serve uh, out of town for mutual aid, they're coming back to cover. They don't need the tri band because anyone coming to us will use our frequency that's current. They take a volunteer from the interior. Yeah, they, they have in their car the, the single band radio so they can communicate, but they do not need Yeah, they won't these. need to try it. Whereas the ones that the chiefs fly are to stay in the firehouse, and that's they get recharged, they never leave the firehouse, they stay with the duty crew that's working. And the three that are for OEM are there for the big emergencies that I can hand to the key players and or people coming in so we can communicate on these and uh, other frequencies. So let me ask you, so these, obviously these all bands would work if we went to the state system because it goes on all bands. That is um, definitely what we should make sure of. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, so the single bands that we have, is it only that we have to go to the state system and then reprogram them to be on the single band or you have to get all new radios? So the, you, the actual hardware inside yep. of them is not capable of okay. programming things. And what do those run approximately so we'd have to go over to the new system but then um what would a single band radio on the new system run? It have a I, yeah i think i i have to look back to quote they were around five four or five thousand for the single band so they're only they're like half because these are like 10 grand each yeah it looks like yeah oh yeah they're substantially cheap. so it's it's double but it's not cheap right it's five grand versus ten they're both expensive right. just once and, and, and that's why moving to the state system all the benefits long term potentially for the fact you don't have to pay for all these upkeep for your system. And you inherently can talk to the neighbors who boot to it, which is pretty much everyone around us. It is a substantial capital hurdle to replace all of this hardware and the patrol cars and fire trucks and then the handhelds to get to that point. And uh, what at what point do you think you would be able to make, because you said Wilton is going to it this year. Correct. So at what point do you think you'd be able to make a decision as to whether or not you'd want it migrate over? I would say in the next year and a half, because they're going to move over. I would give them a year to really see how it goes for them, okay. especially with coverage, because their topography is very similar to ours, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which times out well, because that's when we're going to have to renew our Motorola contract. And, and boy, do they have us oh, in yes. that contract. I, uh, no one, you can't spell monopoly without Motorola. Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> the other thing is, is that um, I, I have spoken with um, Westcock, and they said they wanted to take it on a project, and I got to ping them again to see because it's not just us that would have the same hurdle. Let's see if there's federal dollars, anything that's out there. What does Darian use? They are on their own system and exploring. Like us, okay. Say, yeah. Um, but Wilton, Norwalk, Stanford, Greenwich, uh, Westport, Fairfield. I mean, everybody is moving to the state infrastructure. You got to think these will come down in price. We actually got oh, that does well. seem yeah. of it. We're on the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, every yeah. all technology comes down. Well, have this. you heard from Westport, like sort of their experience? How long they have they been on? They they've been on for a while and they've been very happy with it. I think yeah. they have a much more robust system than we. Trumbull's been go on in a while. They're they're good. Stanford, they, it, 
what I want to do is dig into the, I hate to say, dig into the dollars and cents of all yeah. of this. What are they yeah. paying? Because the way it works is. Because I didn't see that on the long term capital plan. So. Well, and that's, to, that's what that's it is. Probably a... For each radio site, yeah. either the state owns it or we contribute one, which we then have to pay for to make sure we cover spots that don't work in our town. Needless to say, most of the state hardware is aligned with I-95 and the Merritt Parkway. This is the radio system they use for state police, state DOT. However, Wilton's putting up towers. They're, they're adding a couple to the system. Stanford has done so as well as my understanding. So we may be good once they come online for me to drive around and test this. Oh, to see we can piggyback on theirs. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Sorry. Any Thank other you. questions? All right. If I could get a motion to approve a request from the uh, Fire Chief and Emergency Management Director to enter into a contract with Northeastern Communications in the amount not to exceed $99,000 for the purchase of, I'm going to put 10 tri band radios. Um, motion? Is it 10 or is it? It's five and five. It's, it's, five, five, it's five and three. It's five and, no, it's five and five. It's five, three. this is five, two, and then um, three go to OEM and two go to the fire. Okay. So 10 all together. 10 all together. I just want to make sure everybody knows yeah. what we're getting. Um, I'll make the motion. Steve, second. Um, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you. Um, Albie, you have a big request. day. Yes. <laughs> um, request to increase our uh, Northeast fire apparatus uh, blanket PO to 15,000. Uh, this is based on the cost of our estimated <laughs> annual services up until the end of the fiscal year. Any? Um, so what was what's the full what's the full purchase order then once with the fifteen? Uh, we're we're gonna institute this going forward because I I like to see the full. Um, I am okay. Uh, right now you. I have one feet um one request and I didn't print it out. I think it's thirty six. What was it? 46. You have it forty six forty six hundred. No, no 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 forty six. <laughs> Hold on. This is the motor. Oh, you didn't. I don't think I gave you. Uh, yeah, there's one current purchase uh, order for um, Northeast Fire. I think it's for 3,600. That's hang. That's hanging out there, and we already had one right after July one. So based on our estimates, uh, with the amount of services we have left, so the apparatus still have to go out. Yeah. Jill and I are expecting no more than 15,000 for. Um, the repair bill for service. And what apparatus is this exactly? This is going to be various. This could be engine one. Okay. Yeah, one, two, seven, and possibly four. So those go. It's various apparatus. But again, this is doing that one vendor. So we so I can't pay the thirty six hundred dollar bill. We've had a change in finance, and that yeah, um, the aggregate. Of, of a vendor is now, it used to be per project. They right. would only get a purchase order per project. Now, if there's one vendor that's going over the $10,000 limit, we're bringing it forward. Which makes sense. Yeah. Which is why we have a very large agenda today. Exactly. Yeah. That's, okay. <laughs> that's where we are. This, this $3,600 one's bringing us to the 10,000. And um, we're lots of transparency, more. Steve. Lots okay. of transparency. 31 items on the agenda. <laughs> It's a new process. It, once we, where's yes. Anne? Where's Anne? Yeah. yeah, no, but it's it's good. I mean, just so everybody knows that's here and it's probably a little frustrated by the amount. <laughs> it's we're trying to get control over how much we're spending with all of our vendors and you know and making sure that we're you know keeping track of you know where the money's going and who's getting how much for what. So it's yes. it's 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 good. It's painful. It's painful changing processes i understand that so um so to be clear so that basically what we're saying here is just what was the what was the per, the cap before was how much was it on the on, on we were doing individual po's right yeah. oh so this, this is, is just this all, is just all these you. apparatus repairs were over the what we need so we would go out for a regular po Got it. and not ever you know Right. We had a blanket account for the small stuff. Yeah. So if I needed switches or whatever, you know, for a couple hundred dollars, we had a blanket, but it was very low just for those things. And all of the big repairs would go into a true PO process. So now we're kind of figuring out how do we approach this knowing that, all right, I'm going to have like, three apparatus that go next year. All right. So that's roughly 15 grand. We're going to say five grand a piece that are going to 
equal 15 total right. of the board. So that's kind of what we're kind of learning at the same time trying to do this because we're still in that PO process for each apparatus. Right. right. So it's just a slow transition and yeah. we'll, we'll get there. And I think we all need yeah. to be, you know, mindful that this is a new process and, you know, that we'll, we'll get there, it's, okay. you know, so. I applaud the transparency. Yeah. Anyway. But I do not applaud the time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't applaud the time. <laughs> well, okay. going to go a lot faster okay, if you start asking for these. I know. Okay. Um, so any other questions or if not, I yep. could I get a motion to approve a request from the fire chief to increase a previously approved purchase order by $15,000. So moved. Second. Two fifteen thousand. Two fifteen thousand. Two fifteen thousand. I think you said. Two, uh, move it. Two fifteen thousand. Two fifteen. Oh. It's written. By, oh, oh, by, by fifteen thousand. It's written. It's two fifteen, or is it by? I'm bringing it up to fifteen thousand. Oh, this is written incorrectly then. Here's the oh, okay. For, to increase a request by fifteen thousand, we're oh, bringing by. it up to fifteen. <laughs> Well, mine said two that I sent you. So, uh, I, I don't have to two, so it, that's an important to, distinction. So yes, we need to understand what the distinction is. So. Two, 15, yeah, that's fine. Up okay. two. All right. So it's two. Okay, I'm going to reread the motion. Sorry, because no it's, or I'm just going to read. I'm the reading motion. what I said. So okay, so it's two. I didn't read the yes, approval. Of, yeah, <laughs> approval of a request from the fire chief to increase a previously approved purchase order to fifteen thousand well, dollars. So, we typically say is not to exceed. Okay. Yeah. And then yes. Second. It's unanimous. Thanks, okay. Tommy. And you know, in the future, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have what the increase is and then the final. So we all have a good sense of we're gonna you know, top of the form. Yeah. It'll be it'll be easier. All right. Moving along, it's painful. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Tiger. Sachs basketball court reconstruction. Oh, and I see we've got Jen and Jessica yes. online. Oh, and Brian's online too. Hello, Brian's everybody. Morning, guys. Morning. Uh, Morning. This is a completed project. I'm gonna let Jess and Jessica talk first. Thank you on break week. I see palm trees in the background where Jess is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, it's 20 degrees when I left for the office this morning. So. <laughs> Oh, that is painful. I know. Oh, that's not nice. You change your that is not nice. And I'm sure you're sleeping in the. Uh, there you go. The gorgeous. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> uh, it's you want to share your screen or you want me to do it for you? Um, I can share mine. Okay. Or I guess, I don't know, Tiger, you may have to as host. I don't know if I have the ability to. Yeah, you do. We made you co host. Okay. Can I, um, I just want to ask, can you guys hear me okay? I've been having some trouble with my headset. We can. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Thanks, Jess. Yeah. Um, all right, so we are here today um, to share with you guys, I guess uh, to introduce us, sorry, I'll start with that. Um, I'm Jessica Knowles and Jess Hutter is here and we are the PTC, SACS PTC co-presidents. Um, and we wanted to just share with you guys our um, renovation plans for Hawks Court, which is the blacktop area um, that which includes the basketball courts behind Sachs Middle School. Um, and so we have an agenda uh, that to share. Um, we'd like to share with you kind of the reasoning behind the project, what our process has been to date, um, our plans for this space, and then talk about some of the um, initial budget um, for planning and our fundraising, and then we can open it up to Q&A for you guys. Um, so just want to flip to the next slide, please. Yep. On Y Hawks right, Court. Yep. Yep. Sorry. Um, so I just, so this year, sorry, I was looking at something different in my background and this year, um, we had our annual fundraiser, which we call celebrate Sachs, And we focused our fundraising efforts on, um, renovating and refreshing Hawks Court. We gave it that name this year. We thought it was cute. <laughs> Um, and our campaign was called Just Play, and we wanted to highlight um, to the SACS students and to the community how important it is and how fun it is to just get out and play. Um, and we had activities and we had a you know basketball team come in. We tried to have kids um, you know, know that they can go out and play, but it doesn't have to be just like you know, like basketball. We, you know, you can go out and find a like a nice place to read or or you know, 
walk around with your friends, just get them, you know, outside enjoying the um, the space that we have out back. Um, and so in total, we had 426 families that donated to our campaign and we raised over $160,000. Um, and then we, the reason why we want to focus on Hawks Court and, and why it needs a refresh. Um, first, I'd say just maybe go to the next slide so they can see, <laughs> they can see what we're talking about. Um, this is the court um, currently. And as you can see, it's, you know, the lines are faded. There's a lot of cracks. Um, in the bottom picture, you can see that the two courts are different sizes. Neither are regulation, um, middle school, um, you know, size so that, you know, there's weeds growing through the cracks. <laughs> the fencing needs some updating. So we, but but really this is the most utilized space. Um, we, uh, Mr. Gussage jokes, other than the cafeteria um, at SAC. So there are kids of all grades, all ages at school, genders. Um, it's used, you know, on the weekends by the community after, you know, soccer practice, lacrosse practice kids come and play. Um, you know, there's always pickup basketball games. So we just thought it would be a great thing to do for our school and also for the greater community to get this space refreshed and looking great and have it, you know, be playable for the next 20 years. <laughs> And then Jess, you want to turn it over to you? Yeah, perfect. Um, so as Jess said, um, Celebrate Sacks generated over $160,000 in donations. Um, so taking it kind of a step back, we actually started this project or process last summer. Um, we met with Tiger and John Howe at the courts and kind of walked through them, just you know, who would they like us to use for the engineering. So we engaged McCord Engineering to provide us with some site plans. Um, if you've been to the courts at all, you'll know that there's a crown that kind of runs in the middle of the two courts. So our focus with them was how flat we would actually be able to get the surface. And I think Tiger can confirm this, but they were able to get it down to about a 1%, which would be great. Um, we released the RFP on January 11th, January 11th, had a mandatory walkthrough on January 25th. We received two bids on February 1st, um, and the lowest qualified bidder once we went through all the numbers was is Burns Construction. Um, both bidders knew that the plan is work will commence on or around June 17th, depending on what the last day of school is. I guess need to see what kind of snow we get over the next few weeks, um, and that they have to be done one week prior to the first day of the 2024-2025 school year. Um, we did the one week prior just to give us a little buffer in case they need a little extra time getting equipment out or finishing things up. Um, wrong way. Ah, sorry. Technical difficulties. Um, so our plans for the space. We're very excited about this. Um, nothing is changing from the footprint of the area. Um, the only small change, and this is still within the current fenced in area, is there's a curve at the very back up against the playground. So we pick up about 18 inches to two feet of space by getting rid of that curb. Um, the curb, to be honest, is a safety hazard. It comes up against our four square courts, weeds grow, It doesn't, and it isn't serving any purpose. Um, we're gonna replace the asphalt surface with new asphalt, and then there will be a sport court coating put down Regrading the space to remove the crown. Um, both will be able to get two equally sized courts um, in the space that are not full NBA sized courts, but they're more in line with middle school courts. Um, and we'll repaint the lines for the four four square courts. Um, so in addition to the two basketball hoops per court, we're also gonna put an additional practice hoop in the back corner for kids who just want to play knockout or, you know, kind of shoot around without taking up one of the full courts. Um, we are going to purchase and provide new tables and umbrellas for opposing corners for kids who don't want to play four square, don't want to play basketball. Maybe they want to sit and read. Maybe we, they want to play board games, um, you know, kind of just so they have a space as well. Um, and we will be replacing the existing fencing with slightly more attractive um, new black eight foot fencing. Um, so these are the numbers in front of you. So the winning contractor bid to complete the work is one ninety, just call it one hundred ninety three thousand four hundred dollars to give you some rounding. And the end of it's cut off on my screen. Um, <laughs> the ten thousand dollars for the new hoops, um, the 
quote we have, and this may come in a little lower for the tables, is $10,437.60. Um, as part of our fundraising, we did say if donors donated over a certain amount, their name would go on a recognition plaque, which will be put on a rock somewhere in or around the court area. Um, that quote is $2,665.80, and we'll purchase some new trash receptacles to help out our custodians a little bit. Um, and then, you know, the nice outdoor ones of those will come in at $1,358.85. So the total cost of the project will be $217,895.90. Um, and then here is just, these are renderings. It may not look exactly like this, but just so you get a sense, I'm not sure we can actually do the SACS logo in the middle, um, but, you know, it's just, it's going to be a much nicer safer space for our students. And so any questions? Questions, Amy? Yeah. I have a question. Um, so it's amazing you've raised 160,000 for this. So the cost of the project is 217. But yes. where's the downside coming from? So we have underspent our budget over the last couple of years. Um, so I guess starting back, we budgeted, uh, we have $165,000 in the budget for this project. Um, and we've underspent our budget over the last couple of years. We expect to do the same this year. So the Delta is coming from our financial reserves. Great, great. And and with with um, the court and the surfacing, Tiger, correct me if I'm wrong, is there like um, a guarantee on how long the surface is gonna last? Didn't we have a problem with the tennis court I, I just in terms of like, you, know, you guys are investing so much money. So, you know, um, it, you know, is this is this surface guaranteed? And then how what's the, the reasonable useful life on this before we will need to uh, do some maintenance on it going forward? And, and I mean, it, getting kids outside and playing, I think it's phenomenal. I'm just wondering kind of where we are in terms of uh, exposure down the road for for the project. Yeah. So to answer your question, it's about five to 10 years of cooling. So mm -hmm. there'll be a little bit of maintenance that's required as it goes forward. We have a on one of our yeah. facilities. Um, the tennis court did run into a couple of problems with some some areas that were repaired. The majority of the stuff that was fixed was under warranty. So, you know, so okay. So do, you, do we get a warranty on this yeah, as well? Warranty as well, yeah. So uh, the interesting thing with this is it's a, the, the two bidders that we had. So just so you know, we, we went out to a public bid Okay. And then we solicited directly from six separate bidders, four of which chose not to bid, okay, to bid, okay. Um, and then the, it was also picked up by a bidding service called Construct Connect. So at that point in time, I don't know how many people see it at that point in time, but let's, let's well over 100 would see mm -hmm. it there. And they just chose not to bid that way. The two bidders themselves are Burn Construction and Ending Tennis. Ending Tennis is done, the tennis courts, sports is done, the part of the football courts. They are actually working together now whereby burns is the primary and Hindi will come in and do the coding right so the person that normally does all of our codings for all of our courts will be doing it as a subcontractor okay. for burns and then their warranty will apply going what, forward. how long is the warranty i'll have to check i don't know that because okay. i just as someone who has to do this regularly in my home um <laughs> who's how are we planning because it five years is a pretty good stretch um you know that they don't those coatings don't last a long time um so how are we planning to maintain that coating the asphalt will last it's the coating that you're going to have a problem with right that, that's something that we'll have to discuss as far as responsibility going forward whether it'll fall to the parks department or it'll stay for the DOE. so do we have yeah. the coating broken out on on the bid Cost. Yeah, the coding yeah, exactly. independent. Yeah, we should know, we should just know what I mean. Look, it's terrific, but we're, right. it's going to incur some maintenance. Right. That that the coding will definitely need regular maintenance, and you know, um, so we just I think everybody mm -hmm. participating should understand what they're signing up for with that coding. That's fine. I can also ask Hinding to give us a, a, a price estimate on maintenance going forward as well, just so we have that. Okay. So what, what they're doing is on maintenance and what the, what the cost would be going forward for the courts themselves. And at the courts currently, and this sounds like a, it's kind of an odd question, but not, uh, you're going to put trash receptacles there. Are there trash receptacles there right now? Because I know the parks, it's a, it's an issue with whether you want receptacles or, you know, are you guys okay with that? <laughs> no, because then you have so, to empty them. 
You get there the crash. Oh, I'm a fan of crash cans. Yes. What? Yes. So the, custodi the custodians are doing it now. Sorry, what did you say? Just I was saying because there are receptacles there. I've actually yeah. I've seen the custodians emptying them. Um, I think you have to because again, the kids are going out there straight after lunch, so you yeah. have to have something out there. Um, and if we can just make them a little, you know, maybe nicer and get utilized more. I mean, you guys know there's so much trash all over the fields and the courts mm -hmm. as it is. So I think at least giving the kids the opportunity to do the right thing would be helpful. Okay. You know, I just wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page with that, because I know we're always like, do you put them in or do you not put them in, to, uh, you know, uh, issues. So, but that's, so it's the custodian at the schools responsible for these. I've well, seen right. them, yeah. I've... That's right. The, um, hi, good morning. The the custodians clean it out. We've got 12, 1300 students that are going out there on a daily basis yeah. during this, during the week. It's the, and then on the weekends with, uh, you know, there's overflow, there's kids on the field, there's kids always running around. So always a little more cleanup on a Monday morning, but the, um, yeah, they're buying the trash cans and others that well, that will be easier and better for the custodians to use. There's so many kids that walk out there every day. We, you definitely need that and they keep up with it. Tiger, some of the some of the uh, sidewalk around the court has broken up. Um, as you walk in there, are we planning on trying to fix that while we're there, or is that be separate? Us. Yeah, we we can talk to the contractor, but that's the town responsibility. Yeah. We'll take a look and see. Sachs itself, the parking lots of Sachs, the POE has money in their budget for this year. It's a two phase approach for the parking lots. Yeah, and that follows to take care of curbing and sidewalks at that time. Yeah, because I went over on Sunday, and right, literally, as you walk in there, it's really crumbled as you as you walk right. through. Yeah, you got to make a delineation between the two projects. It wasn't fair to ask them for that. Yeah, so yeah. We said, okay, we'll just go to the existing fence line, and from the fence line in would be the project itself. Anything from the fence line out will be others' responsibility. Yeah. And, uh, the only thing that we have is that the grades will match, so that we don't have to touch the entire sidewalk. So that was one of the design parameters for McCord was that the. the the grades at that end on the sidewalk and the parking lot end would match and then we, we have enough room on the back side to run whatever grades we need whatever grade we need running to the back side as i was mentioned because you currently have a drain on the right right rear there is that where all the water sort of drains back to that side or is that uh it's actually it's it's got a little bit of a different sheet flow now yeah. and we we're with this we're putting in some additional drainage and then a, a gravel separator, so or a gravel spreader, I should say. So McCord's done a very nice job working through it. I had Maria review it as well. So they've done a nice job trying to mitigate, you know, it's a large expanse, but they've done a nice job of mitigating the, the stormwater. And then in terms of neighbors and what, what the neighbors should expect during the construction and after, you've got an eight foot fence here, which now there's a, a much smaller fence. So that's good, I guess, right? So, and then there's a mm -hmm. stockade fence that, that the neighbors have you know, at the property line there. So they're not going to see any kind of they're, change there. They shouldn't see anything. No, the, the, the larger, the, the reason for the, the taller fences is because the balls are bouncing out yeah. into yeah. the parking lot or into the other play area. So that was the reason for the additional fencing in that area. But they shouldn't see anything. The, the construction will be the construction, but it'll be normal Monday through Friday, you know, normal work hours. We shouldn't see any reason to uh, to expand those hours into, into a Saturday or Sunday. I, I think that they've got ample time in their contract. They understand I met with um, Burns twice on this project uh, post um, uh, when they, they were determined to be the you know the apparent pro bidder um, to speak about timing and speak about the contract itself and what, you know whether or not all well, the numbers were were um, that they felt comfortable that they could complete the project and they were they were very much in, in favor they want they want they want to come do this project they're very excited about it. So timeline is, are we trying to get this done in the summer when the kids aren't summer. there? Yeah, yeah. The, the, it's, yeah. It, was, it was written multiple times in the, in the contract that it's June 17 to August 24, yeah. or August 17, I'm sorry, right, you get an extra week before school starts, and they can start the day after school, and their footprint is basically, the, they, they're they able to use the entire basketball court for their laydown area and stuff. We weren't giving them any other areas into the parking lot. They could utilize whatever they needed inside, inside that fence line was theirs. Outside that fence line, they, they, uh, I didn't want them to impede upon anything the school might be doing during the summer. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, any other questions? Uh, the, the only thing is, I, I do think we do need to know, yeah. um, you know, if it's every four or five years, it's going to be an uh, incremental cost of X to yeah. keep these up. I think that, because, I mean, I know this has to go to town council yeah. as well, so yeah, that information right. should go. 
Yeah. And so, yeah, if you could, just before you go to the town council, if you could, um, one, clarify the guarantee, how long, you know, how long that's guaranteed. And then also the, you know, how long that coding and, and, and the price to redo that. I mean, obviously in today's dollars, we'll see what that is in five years, but just so everybody understands yeah, going into it before your town council presentation. Yeah. And I want to make, I mean, I, I think we, as a town, whether it's the board of ed or the town, we really should have that sidewalk fixed before, you know, you'd hate to see this whole brand new court right. sitting there and then this crumbling sidewalk right outside. But I'm sure you'll take care of it. Right. Okay. So there'll be a holistic approach. You just couldn't put it into this contract. It was yeah. out there. You know, they raised a ton of money as it was. That's the, you know, I figure that's a different, different, yep. path. different conversation. Yep. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you for all your work that's on this. Great. It was an amazing project and um, I'm sure the kids will thoroughly utilize it. So. Yeah, um, congratulations on all that fundraising. Yeah. $200,000 is a lot of money. <laughs> Thank you. It's a, it's a heavy lift. Thank yeah. you. As I constantly say, we have an unbelievably generous community. So That's thank you. Yeah. Um, so if I could get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works in partnership with the Sachs Middle School PTC and the Board of Education to enter into a contract with Burns Construction in the amount of $193,433. $193, $433.65 plus a 15% contingency of $29,000 for a total cost of $222,433.65. The project entails the reconstruction of four basketball courts and a playing area at Sachs Middle School. The funds are being provided by the Sachs Middle School Parent Teacher Council and the project has been approved by the Board of Education. Note per town code, the project is contingent upon approval by the overall project by the town council. Steve, so, okay. Amy, it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy your Thank break. Thank you, week. guys. Thank you very much, everyone. We really appreciate the support. Very much so. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Elm Street events. Morning. Oh, morning. So Elm Street events, the reason we're here is because this is for the father-daughter dance, where we're able to, with self-sustaining fund, add a second seating, so to speak. Um, and so we went over the, the 10,000 regular contract. So that's why we're here looking for 15,601.25 to pay the contract. For the five and that's for both events? That's for both, both seatings. Yeah, yes. both seatings. Yep. And this is all because it's self-sustaining. You have revenue that offsets the expenses. We have these. revenue already yes. in place yep. more than. Yeah, that covers the expense. Covers the expense. Okay. Any questions? What is the total revenue? Do you know? I was, as I was sitting there, I'm saying, I'm going to ask I'm you prepared. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, there it is. Oh, man, I don't have it exactly. It's but when you get a chance. It, it was, yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm when you get a chance. Thanks. And we, we are taking in, just so you know, um, we yeah. this year in the total self sustaining fund, we're planning, I believe, on 100000 from the self sustaining fund coming in to offset the yeah. town. Yes, that's yeah. excess revenue. Yeah. Yep. So just so keep it up, man. Okay. Keep it up. Okay. okay. That's a great event. I mean, yeah. you know, you've had uh, having to have a second session is. Yeah. It was Pretty nice to, we had a huge waiting list. Yeah. You know, yeah. That filled up almost the whole second event. Yeah. So these are, this is one of those easy ones. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So could I get a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so could I get a motion to approve a request from the Parks and Record Department to enter into a contract with Elm Street Events in the amount of $15,601.25? For the father daughter dances, funds are available in the self sustaining fund. So, second, it's unanimous. Thank you. Thanks, John. Okay, and John, irrigation design. Great. So, this is for multiple designs or redesigns of our systems that are currently in place. Uh, one thing we've noticed we're at the, we're at the almost 25 year mark for almost all our systems. That was my question. How old are they, Sam? Yes, okay. with, with a life expectancy of 20 years. So we're, we're feeling we're doing well. Mead Park has been probably our most problematic one and the one we want to do first. We had some mainline issues. Uh, we've had quite a few mainline issues over the years from uh, wear and tear, so to speak, of the system. Uh, that's the one we want to key on first. We have some money presently that's been approved for replacing irrigation systems, and we want to start with need. The main reason we want to design all the systems is so we have true, true better budget numbers. And if Coppel Field goes ahead, um, we need to, the, the well for Waveney is over by the little small garage at Lapham Senior Center. So 
the main line has to go past Coppo Field. So if Coppo Field mm -hmm. built, we might as well know where we want to put the main out of the way, the control system has to get for the orchard system. So, yeah. So John, what's it, so we have um, systems in place mm -hmm. currently that are old, yes. right? So is it a complete, I mean, it's the same company that put them in, right? So they're familiar with the, the it's the same designer, designer not the right. same company. This so, is so, not the company that install systems. Okay, right. so this is a designer. So um, is is it tweaking it? Is it looking fresh? Or is it's it... looking fresh now. Okay. Um, a lot of new water saving features have happened over right. what we're dealing with. So that helps with pipe sizing, also sprinkler selection, control systems, that the whole holistic approach, even though we're using wells, so they're not governed under water restrictions or anything, uh, we still feel we should sure. be using the least amount of water we can and making sure the water goes where we want it. So, so this is just the design component. This is the design. And Which will trigger an expense of approximately how much on the other, on the put-in system side of it? You know, without, we don't really truly know yet. Uh, a much bigger yeah, thing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, two hundred thousand dollars probably. Okay. You know, we don't have to replace our well, so that's that's the good part. Yeah, but replacing all the piping, all the sprinklers. And, and that potential expense is future budget year. Future budget yeah. year for for a lot of these. Okay. Each park will be the one that we'd like to. Yeah, is that normal to have a twenty five percent design fee for a for a project? It's also the construction management too, and, so, and I'm really guessing on the number. You know, I'm. I'm hoping we can do that. So wait, this design <laughs> includes construction management or not? It includes construction. So we don't know who we're going to use, but they would manage the they construction. They would still manage the construction. And they, they're also going to, besides the design, they're going to help us with the bid to evaluate the installers. Because you only get as good of a system as the installer you have. So Why is there a contingency for a design fee? The main reason is by... Contingency there is there is some extra expenses in there which is included in their prices, but my fear is the construction management of these projects is going to be over the next few years. So that's why I think we need the contingency. What what's that construction management price for when they have to come down here? That type of stuff. But, but does the construction management go into, you know, when you're actually building a project? I mean, in terms of when you you. They, they have it in their proposal. Okay. So, yeah. So they're usually that's the design, and yeah. then it moves into the, yeah. the management and the actual dollars of the construction. But yeah, it is yeah. a little unusual to have it grouped together like that. Yeah. But. What did we get any like just design fee? We, we did. We had a tremendous problem finding a designer. In, in the big picture, these are small systems. Yeah. It's a very yeah. limited, it's a very limited course. number of people that actually do this. Right. right. Exactly. And right. Uh, at first, they didn't even want to really relook at our systems again. Okay. Um, do we, I, I guess I, I'm still having a hard time with the construction management because one, we don't even know who we're going to hire or when or when. And so we're paying, we're kind of front loading a big expense. Um, we're not paying, the, we're not paying them. Okay. We're just budgeting. We're, we're budgeting we're, for we're, it for we're it now. Budgeting, getting approval so they can start on the plans and everything. They'll but that goes into that. so so it that came out of this year's budget, but we may not be using the the build for like two two years. Right. We won't be we won't be paying. N no, I know, but the, okay. Until it's done. Okay. <clears throat> So the, the design service numbers, ignoring the contingency, those are solid numbers for this organization to design these one, two, three, four different discrete, discrete projects. So that's what they bid out to design it. Those are solid. To design it, yes. Okay. Yeah, so I guess for us, we're very supportive of this. But it's I think what we're, all of us are saying is we'd like to see it broken out where it's the, you know, the bidding of the design and then the construction management comes back later, I guess, to, but if, if you're saying, John, that you need to do this now, you know, for this one particular project, then, you know, get behind I, that. But in I, the future, you, it, I think it should be separated. Yeah, I only from a budgetary yeah. standpoint, because it's like, we're saying we have dollars today available to pay this. Yep. Um, and, you know, what else aren't we doing 
because we're taking funds for this now that actually isn't happening. I mean, you're, or you're allocating funds now. I can go back to them yeah. and have you break it out and come back to you for yeah. just the design portion. Yeah, because I think we'd want to bid out the construction management when we bid out the the actual installation. I don't, yeah. I mean, I, I don't. That's how it works. Well, that's yeah. when the construction management is necessary. Is managed. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so if, yep. you, if you want to. Yeah, why don't we do that? Yeah. Why don't we do that? Two weeks is not going to be a problem. Okay. So. Why don't yeah, we do that, good. John? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The other, the other thing, and I know Amy and I have gone through this over the years with, uh, at times we've approved sprinkler heads here, sprinkler heads there, you know, and how often that, that stuff goes on. I, you know, it, it's, I remember thinking, wow, you know, you don't really think about it, but it's, there's wear and tear on that stuff that happens because we use it all the time. And at Connor, for instance, I know we those, those broke down. Then we had some up at Waveney break down, and, and it's just a constant. And there's constant repairs. It, constant. So, so this would be. Are we talking about kind of trying to redo everything, or on, or, on these where these systems are? Yes, replace yeah. everything. Yeah. So, like dig down, put the pipes in brand the whole pipes, brand new control wiring, brand new sprinklers. Uh, but they are 25 years old, right? They're 25 years old. Part of SACS is over that. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Huh. yeah. There you go. It'll be on an app for you. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, John. All right. Okay. Thanks, John. So, so now you can get work. the next one for an after school programs. Okay. This this is um, simply one of our vendors that we use for before and after school programs. And no, I do not have a profit loss. But you're going to give it, get it to for you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we're looking to pay Savvy Juniors LLC ten thousand five hundred eight for the program for multiple different programs that they run as before before and after school. And um, John, do you do you or does do this? Do you guys do the um, you know the background checks on these organizations or who who they does do, that? They have to do their own background checks and send it to you. Yes. Okay. We we do. We don't do, when we hire teachers, we don't do background checks because that's done by the school right, system. Right. But if we're hiring our own people, we run background checks. Because I just, because I used to run this for the PTC and, you know, we would have, we did that for all these organizations. We had background checks that we ran on them before we brought them into the schools. Right. We so, require them to run their Okay. Checks. Okay. So in addition to the revenues, it would be so cool to know how many people use us. And even like the father-daughter dance, it would be so cute to know how many couples. It, I would just put that in because it's it's kind of good to know how many people use it. You, like Park and Rex, you're the happy place. Exactly. <laughs> Tell us how many happy people there are. Yeah. That's why it's the best job in the town. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a sweet one. <laughs> okay, any other questions? No, this is a great program. Okay, so could I get uh, an approval of a request from the Parks and Rec Department to enter into a contract with Savvy Juniors LLC in the amount of $10,508 for multiple after-school programs at the three elementary schools? So much. Second. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Tiger, 911 Memorial Plaza, railing. John's feeling beat up. Huh? John's feeling beat up. <laughs> Good morning again. So this is uh, an, um, an extension of the contract, or I should say an additional amount required for uh, work at the 9-11 Memorial Plaza. So we have to install, based upon the fact that there's a fall hazard, um, grades are too high at the end of the plaza. Uh, at present, we don't have a guardrail there. I don't know why when it was constructed originally, it didn't have it, but in speaking with the fire marshal, we need a rail around the plaza itself and then down the staircase. We had asked Finney's custom uh, metal fabricators to come in with a price. They had done that. Board Selectman approved that back in September of 23. And then when we came out to look at the, the project and, and delve in further, there was to be a, um, a depression in the curb to allow you to drop someone off. And uh, that was a six inch depression in the curb. We didn't want to have a depression in the curb right alongside Elm Street for fear of a car driving up on or what have you. The moment that we raised that up by six inches and made it a, a, a regular curb or a conventional curb, then we raised, in essence, the grade on the other end. We raised the rate grade on the other end by six inches, required a little bit more hand down. So 
originally we were going to just have the handrail straight out in front of you. If you were looking at it as you came out to the plaza, straight in front of you, in front of the uh, the uh, train station, and then around to the stairs. And then this requires us to have a little bit more on the left hand side. So uh, we asked Vinny to come back with a revised price, and overall we need uh, approval of an additional nine hundred and twenty dollars. We have the funds available. We just to, uh, have this have this approved. I felt it was much more prudent to come back since the board selectmen had already approved it. Instead of asking Tiana to sign for nine hundred twenty dollars, we could come back and, uh, and ask. But that's the uh, that's the overall reason for it. It's just a question of uh, slight design modification, which caused us to have. Some additional railing that was required. Any questions? Does it fall within the contingency of this project? We're a little bit above the contingency mm -hmm. in this, so that's why we're asking for the 920. And that comes from, I mean, it's only 920 dollars. Where's it come from? It comes out of the same account, but yeah, okay, side walls account. So, side walls account, okay. Well, two, two things to applaud, applaud the transparency of the $920, but also this project is amazing. It really looks, the difference in terms of the way it looks at one of the parts of our town, the train station, Elm Street, huge improvement visually. And, yeah, that's uh, why we'll put the pictures in the I was going to say, we need to have them up on the screen for yeah, the public. So it's really amazing. But And there have been a couple of residents I've, I've heard from that said, hey, are we doing anything with railings there? Because it looks dangerous. And people actually see that it looks dangerous. And, right. and obviously you addressed it. So. Good. Uh, we've cleaned it out. You can see exactly if there's a fall hazard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, that, that'll be taken care of with this. And there'll be railings down the oh, stairs. Yeah, down this, yeah, it'll all be cold. Yeah. Paul, right and, Paul and Brian, Paul Payne and Brian Flaps are building official and our, our fire marshal both looked at it multiple mm -hmm. times and with the contractor and, uh, and agreed as to where we uh, basically directed where we were going. So the opening on Elm Street will stay the way it is, and the and the the rest of the fencing will be sort of a round fencing that goes around the memorial itself, and then railings down. Is that? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, the, you look on the outside of the patio all the way around, and then yeah. railings down. Got it. Perfect. Any other questions? ADA compliant from the top. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. That was the other that was the other concern, right? So we, that's why we made it flush as well. We had a little slight grade coming in off the sidewalk down to the patio. We decided to keep that flush for the exact same reason. That change of rates, so I'm interested. Nice job. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. All right. If I could get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works to amend a previously approved contract with Vinnie's Custom Metal Fabricators LLC in the amount of $920 for the installation of guard and handrails at the Elm Street train station, 911 Memorial Plaza. This brings the total cost of the project to $17,700. So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thanks, thank All right. You. So this, Where in? Uh, this next item is, is uh, approval of a temporary easement for Aquarian's work at the uh, Town Mitchell pump station, their new pump station. Uh, there was a original, they have, this is basically phase two. So phase one had a temporary easement associated with it and a permanent easement. The permanent easement and the temporary easement were both approved prior. They're through that first phase. Now they're working on the second phase. The second phase is actually to take the underground pump station out of service and remove it. Uh, it's in the embankment between the top two tiers. You won't even notice it except to see a hatch grass. Uh, and in order to do so, they need a little bit of a lay down area inside our parking lot. So they've asked for uh, an easement, temporary easement for this. Once they're done with that portion of the construction, the easement will go away and we'll have full use of the parking lot again. This was part of uh, the, the first easement was a little bit larger for the construction, if you will, for the construction of, of the facility. This is a little bit small. We haven't had use of this area since they started construction well over a year ago. So it's, it hasn't seemed to uh, <clears throat> hurt us at all at present. Speaking of Stacey, I think we're fine. So it's just a question of uh, allowing them access to this area. They'll fence it off. You know, they'll keep it safe. Um, and, then, uh, and then when they're done, um, six months from now or so, We'll get it back. It's, so it's a yellow area? It's the yellow area. That's Which correct. in the, the other area is still? The other area is actually their permanent easement. So right. that outside area, you can see where they have a, uh, their, their structure, area around their structure, and then the actual piping, the pump station piping, it's all underground. So there's mm -hmm. nothing above ground in that area. That, that leg going down, that's all underground piping. No impact to commuters, really, because it's it, they're, they're already there. Uh, this was um, these were paid daily spaces up here. Yeah. 
and then we kind of switch a little bit more and put them down at the lot across the street to right. get them a little bit closer to uh, the station itself. And we haven't had a concern. We have, we're, we're, while the capacity has increased, we're at full, full capacity here. No worries about them claiming this squatter's rights here on this no, property. Okay, no, that's they've been there. Well, we have use them, right, so they can't. <laughs> yeah, Speci it's specifically written in there that they have a certain time frame, and then they have to vacate. Okay. So yeah, because I was going to ask you about that. It says it says they have up to two years on that spot. So, right. but you think it'll be six months it'll in the middle? Yeah, according to where they are in their 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 overall construction schedule, it should be a lot faster. Correct. Right. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Sounds good. Okay. If I could get a uh, motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works for a temporary easement with Aquarian Water Company in order to complete installation of a new pump station at Talmadge Hill parking lot. So moved. Thank you. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm joined by Joe Zagorinsky, our senior engineer, to talk about the next um, item. All right. Good morning. So I'm here today to um, get approval for a bus technology and security provide a security camera at the Tomage Hill lot. Um, it's the train station lot. The primary function of this camera is to monitor the police department impound lot um, up at the top, which is best practices. Um, so that as this camera will perform double duty, as it will give us some coverage through the first first coverage that we have over in that over in that lot. It's been on our overall plan for security. For, for some years now. So um, this will provide that, uh, will provide the, uh, the view of the Talmadge Hill um, lot for, for the police department storage area. And it will also provide the same coverage at the top of the lot. So what, what area is the impound area of that lot? Right up on top, right next to the- Pump um, station? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's like the other portion okay. of the lot. Okay, okay. Where's the money? It's, it's it's not in the PD building, is it, or is it? No, it's, it is not. It's, it's in our security initiative. It was part of our original security initiative for that for that place. It just came up to bring with it up this, yeah, quicker in the process when it was decided that Tom Chill was going to be the, uh, the well, we figured out where to put it, right? Yeah, exactly. okay, all right. And so this is all budgeted. We're we're all planning on doing this. It's just it's budgeted. Double duty. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, over the years, we've had some car break-ins at Thomas. I mean, will this help that particular area at all, or is that uh, more? It's more just the impound lot. So, yeah. <laughs> so it'll give you um, a panoramic view. Yeah, it, it's primarily to the, the point of view is going to be, you know, focused on that particular lot, but yeah. it'll give you additional views. Um, the challenge with cameras is you never have in the right spot, right? right. Like you. Right. You have to like basically litter the lot with cameras to right. be all that helpful, but um, but it will provide some coverage. Yes, absolutely. Hey, can we move that once? Like because that's a little high. Once it's no longer an impound lot, is it is it really expensive to move it so it's in a more we, useful location long term? We could. So the cameras are IP IP based. Yeah. Um, they are five G cameras mm -hmm. for the five G system to to talk. So. It's not, there's no um, town WAN over that area. So it's going to be cloud based. So we can relocate that anywhere. Or we could change the view okay. of it anywhere. Or we could add another camera to, to have a more focused view um, for addition, a, a different initiative. Yeah, I mean, I know the commuters would be very supportive of having additional cameras over there. You, you know, the, the, the car driver just parked there a long time and it's just a tough spot. So, yeah. How long is the, uh... Are the images kept? Um, it depends on the amount of um, storage we have, but mm -hmm. I think uh, 90, 90 days at a minimum. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. So if I could get on a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works as part of the town's police department renovation project to enter into a contract with A plus technology and security in the amount of $9,324.49 to install cameras and a monitoring system at the police department impound lot at Talmadge Hill parking lot. So moved. Second. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. All right. West School parking lot. So uh, this next item is um, the West School parking lot is out the bid for uh, paving itself. This is for um, sidewalk work and, um, and curbing work uh, in the area we needed to supply the materials. <clears throat> I went out to <coughs> two suppliers 
I asked the contractors around and the next supplier that I would actually have to ask for it, the price from Canada necessarily at that point in time, shipping costs, I think, with them out of the, out of the uh, mix. So we went to, uh, the, the two that we go to, uh, William Stone and Swenson Granite. Uh, <clears throat> William Stone came in at the low bid at $11,887.80. I asked for a contingency of 500 bucks because the granite is well, well, I asked for 400 feet, I'm making 399, I'm making 401. Uh, you know, and I have to pay for what is on the truck itself. So there's always a little bit of a delta uh, across the board. Um, so that brings the total cost to 12,387. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. Like, I, uh, I did a quantity takeoff and a, and a balancing of the two quotes because um, <clears throat> Swenson can only put 380. Uh, feet on the truck versus 400 on the Williams truck. So you have to kind of figure out how each thing goes through. But oh, is that why Swenson's more expensive? Because Swenson's they can't transport more more expensive for linear foot and for their haul transportation. As well, yeah, Swenson's coming out of North uh, New, ha uh, New Hampshire. Okay, mm. they have a subsequent partner that comes out of uh, North Carolina. Uh, so and where's that's, our buddy William Stone? Williams from? is in Massachusetts. Okay, a little bit closer. Well, you're seeing the difference in the in the price of the hall specifically. The hall is starting to take a lot of the other contractors on the next. Okay. So. Like, wasn't there a time where we were buying it bulk because we knew we were going to use this type of granite, or is this a different type this, of granite than the curbing? Not, no, this is the exact, exact same. same. So what what we actually do is they try to fill the truck every yeah. time. Right. So because we, if we use the same the same material same everywhere in town, the, right. That's I know right. you can't go to Costco and buy it, but it's like it seems like we should, you know, I, I fill a truck every single time, no matter what the quantity would be. Yeah. Right. So, so that's why I said it's really put 400 on their trucks. Swenson can only put 360 to 38. Right. So it's a difference between the two. So I have to balance out the bid associated with that because that would be fair to both bidders. Right. Yeah. One says, oh, well, 400 feet gets you an additional 40 feet on another truck. Have to take that out of the bid and say, okay, no, what's your unit price? What's your haul for what you can give me? Uh, but yes, to your point, we try to fill the truck and that. And then you'll it. store it at the and highway and where the highway yeah, park, okay. right, to minimize that addition. I don't want to pay a short book. I don't want to pay a short book. <clears throat> so this one and the next one, the exact same thing. We, we maximize the truck. Good. Um, Good. Nice. It just so happens that now, based on geography, we're really going down the blades. Probably went one because the trucking costs have gone through the roof. We used to buy exclusively, to your point, from North Carolina Granite. That's smart. And uh, they would have it here in two days. But now they're charging $3,750 a load. So there's no way that they can make that all anymore. Whereas before, they were charging a zero on the mm. ball. And their per corroboration price, their per linear foot price, was less than what we were buying from someone else around here with the haul. Now they can't do it anymore. Post-COVID, they can't do it anymore. Okay. All right. Um, so if I could get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works to enter into a contract with William Stone in the amount of $11,887.80 plus a contingency of $500 for a total cost of $12,387.80 for the purchase of a granite curbing for the West School parking lot project. So Amy, 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 Amy. And then this, bingo. This, right. This next one is a Same very thing. similar. Um, okay. The only thing I didn't mention is the fact that one reason why we're out so early is because if we don't get in their in their cut list, their cut list fills. I mean, that at that point in time, we're looking at possibly not getting into winter at all for the year. So okay. one of the reasons why we're out um, early. But the exact same thing. Ask the the, uh, the two suppliers. William Stone came in at the low at twenty three thousand four eighty two eighty. Again, I added five hundred dollars just for. Um, a difference in, in linear footage uh, for a total of twenty three thousand ninety two eighty. Okay. Any questions? Just at, at the parking lot, uh, the pool parking lot. This curbing would. Are you talking about doing the entire perimeter with this, no. or so just the just the? Question. So what we're looking at, we have that sidewalk that comes in. Yeah. The paddle over right now. That's a it's a blacktop sidewalk with a with a um, with a, a, a blacktop curbing. A blacktop um, curb, right? right? So we're trying to go to a granite curb since it's directly adjacent to the roadway. Once it's directly adjacent to the roadway, we put in granite curbs. We'll have granite curb lining that entire stretch with a brand new concrete sidewalk associated with it. And then on the other side, to front the entrance, we'll have granite as well. So the entrance will be granite. And then the moment you get into the, the lot itself, you'll, the curbing itself is actually in pretty good shape. We're hoping we'll be able to maintain the majority of it. The bid has a thousand linear feet as an estimate of. of 
curbing that we might have to replace, but overall it's in really good shape. So we're hoping we can just take a lot of put a lot back in and, and leave the curbing. Um, so no, we're not looking at putting granite throughout. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works to enter into a contract with William Stone in the amount of $23,482.80, plus a contingency of $500 for a total cost of $23,982.80 for the purchase of granite curbing for the PAVE 2024 Bank of Pool Parking Project. So much. Second, Amy, unanimous. Thank you. Okay, land. So this next one is a uh, approval of three contracts with uh, Keith e. Simpson Associates, landscape architect. Um, the first is the New Canaan Nature Center, the garden area. We had a uh, problem with the garden area back um, last year where there was uh, we found lead in the area. We had to remediate it. So now we're looking at trying to see what we can do with the. This area. was the, where the herb garden was, right? The herb garden. Yeah, the that's a shame. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second one is uh, at Waveney House itself, the western parking lot. If you're looking at Waveney House, the right-hand side parking lot, that's considered the western parking lot. Uh, when that was put in originally, um, it was actually supposed to be a mirror image of itself. So if you look at it, we've got parking on one side. You come in, you park on the left-hand side, you kind of finagle parking along the, along the guide rail there. But it was supposed to be a sister parking lot. That's why it's completely inefficient. For parking itself, it's very difficult to decide where you're going to be. Put people park all over the grass. This was a concern from when we had our, our walkthrough with the Department of Justice and the fact that the grades from the handicapped spaces over and into the house are not necessarily um, to the right grade. Right? They're not in the right cross slope. They're not, not the right grade itself. So we asked Keith to come in and give us an overall layout plan for what it would be to try to maximize the spaces given the fact that we had this anomaly at the time and make sure that the grades are correct so we can then satisfy the department's concerns. And then <clears throat> along with that, across the street, um, uh, we're looking at redoing the playground area itself. And while we have a design for the playground and, and the uh, athletic area, we don't have an overall look as to that entire parcel. So in between the parking lot and the, and the road itself, it's a very large green space that we would like to then kind of make its own parkway, if you will. If we're going to spend that amount of money and raise the funds to, to do the playground area and the athletic facility with it, we should look at some benching, some other things, some some possible pathways to, for connectivity, things of that nature. And we're asking Keith to come in and give us an overall look um, for that area so that we can say we just didn't haphazardly place the playground or, or the athletic uh, area inside this. We wanted to look at it holistically. And we had some concerns from the conservancy looking from the house towards the playground area to make sure that there was some adequate screening to then shade the house or shield the house from the playground area. So the playground itself will be muted colors in the height so that it won't be that tall um, overall. So we think we're, we're satisfying some of those needs, but we want to have someone take a look holistically at the area. Um, so is this in concert with the conservancy? So Keith, <laughs> is it, the conservancy yeah. is good with Keith? The key, yes, the, they are. the point person That's on this. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then when we come forward with him, when we come forward with the original schematic design, we'll go meet with the conservancy to make sure that they're comfortable with the design itself. I have just a general question. Sure. How do you come up with what's the right amount for a design? Of, you know, how do you come up with what's the appropriate so, amount to charge? I know that sounds like a silly question, but it's like, Every time we turn around something, it's just an even number. It's 6,000, 4,000. I, I have no idea. Historically, we were always looking at something under $5,000 we thought was fair, but that was probably 10 years ago pricing. Right? Mm -hmm. So now it's a little bit more. I can tell you that right now, we we uh, we contracted with six separate landscape architects last year. Um, we've got four under contract this year. Two others are working for the Conservancy directly, so that makes six total again. Um, and Keith, he's probably... Second or third, probably third on the uh, the amount of money spent, you know. But he's probably number one on the number of projects itself. His pricing is very competitive, and he's in town, which makes him very. Uh, it's a it's a great boon for us because mm -hmm. he knows every single area we're looking at, um, and he does a nice job. And he has the view of what we're looking at, what, what the town is looking for from our parcels and from our areas. Um, we've had other landscape architects come in and try to. Use, utilize their design in our parks or in our areas, not necessarily what the town was looking for at the time. Uh, 
So yeah, he's done he's done some excellent work for us in the past. Mm -hmm. I expect to do in the future. And his pricing is very very. Uh, I won't call it cheap because that's some it's a terrible word, but inexpensive as far as it goes for the cost of a principal and the cost of mm -hmm. uh, of his associate for their cost, their hourly wage mm -hmm. which is much less than the hourly wages we're seeing across the board for other landscape architects. And, and same question, the Nature Center is is happy that Keith would be the one taking a look at that. Yeah. It's such a shame up there, but it is. It's you know it's unfortunate, but we're trying to figure it out. At least figure it out and, and at least make it nice again, right? So mm -hmm. it was a nice community garden, it was a nice herb garden, and now we have this expansive area of nothing. Grab on it. Try to make something beautiful out of uh, what, what what occurred. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what it was. Any other questions? That's it. I mean, Keith's institutional knowledge of what McKenna needs is he's been doing it yeah. for a long, the decades and decades. To I'll be honest with you, I, I, one time, about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I had to come up with a parking lot design for a uh, Latin community center, that extra leg, that, that mm -hmm. third leg. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was at a town council meeting and they were speaking about what are we going to do for additional parking. So we'll have to go take a look at it. And I got a call the next morning. He said, I already have a plan. And he handed me the plan for Bono, and it was completely ready to go to bid. And it's what you see out there now, the design you see out there now. We paid zero dollars for it at the time. So he's looked at other areas, done the exact same thing multiple times. So uh, I think he's, I think he's an asset. Yeah. And, and this money's in your budget. Money's your yeah. budget. Okay. That's correct. Could I get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works to enter into contracts with Keith E. Simpson Associates Inc. in the amounts of for New Canaan Nature Center, the garden area, $6,000. For Waveney Park Western Parking Lot, $4,500. And for the Waveney Park Proposed Playground Area, $6,500. So moved. Second. Okay. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Tiger, Erwin Park. So it's, it was a uh, design development for the boardwalk, excuse me, the proposed wetland boardwalk um, at Irwin Park. We had Richard and Segan. Richard and Segan did the original master plan and then did the plan for all the the, the trails were out there. So it was, a, it was a nice fit to have them come back in and do this portion or design this portion. It was part of the original master plan, wasn't implemented at the time due to cost. Uh, and now um, the park is booming. And I think it's another little area that we should uh, we should explore. Uh, so we see, I mean, they did schematic design work for us. And now they're uh, looking to finalize the design. We'll be going to wetlands in March um, for, for it, and we'll likely have to go to PNC for a site plan application as well. Um, so uh, this is their uh, uh, their fee, 13600 for the design development, and then permitting itself is based on an hourly basis as to how much is necessary. We try to carry the predominant load from the permitting side. They give us the plans, they give us some of the information that we need, but we fill out the permitting, we try to do um, Everything on our end to try to lessen that amount. Um, so it's a total of twenty-two thousand four fifty, and the funds are currently available in, uh, in this uh, site. Any questions? Just a, the, it, it's a not. I mean, they have hourly rates on some of the stuff, so it's not it's, to exceed. It's, yeah. Well, yes, that's correct. If you look on the back side, you'll see their you'll see their hourly rates. Yeah. No, I, I was noticing right. just because. Yeah. Right. It's just so it's not to exceed. Okay. It's not to exceed. I didn't put a contingency in. That's exactly where it is. Okay. Um, and and we um, the the permitting part it, we won't pay that until we get to the as, point. Pay that as for effort. Yeah. So we've had a little bit of effort now trying to get the wetland application going forward, and then actually during the presentation they'll have time associated with it. We don't have them come down. We try to have them so that they're upstate, <laughs> so we can not close. We try to have them. Stay at home, you know, similar to other projects when they worked on Dutch, of course, exact same thing. They uh, through the ZBA and through the others, they uh, they did it through uh, through so and so. So these permitting fees we're paying ourselves, right? Yeah. No, the fee well, is the... well, I'm paying for the architect to yeah. for his work towards right. getting a permit from the town. That's correct. Right, but do do we actually? Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. We're are paying. Like, are we, and like, so the actual is there a permitting <laughs> fee that we, the town, are paying the town? We don't pay. Thank you. That's what I was trying to get. It's a fair question. It's a fair question. Don't pay a building permit. <laughs> fee. We don't pay a P and C. Just making sure. Right. But we have to pay the work to get us to that point, which yeah. makes sense. Okay. Thanks. 
And just to be clear, Tiger, this is the project that we've been talking about for a couple of years, getting that boardwalk put through up at Irwin. That's correct. Right. We've talked about it at length. Guard clubs raised a lot of money. They've they've uh, mm -hmm. brought it to different towns and boards, and you know, so it, it, we're moving along, which is good news. That's well, they, they've worked really hard to get it to this point. Yeah. And the town council approved one hundred and seventy five thousand yeah. yeah. toward this project. So this goes against what was approved. That's, right. That's correct. Yeah. So it's in the works. Good. Okay, so if I could get a motion to approve um, a request from the Department of Public Works in conjunction with the Canaan Garden Club to enter into a contract with Richter and Segan Landscape Architects, the amount of $22,450 for design development and permitting phases of the proposed wetland boardwalk at Irwin Park. Steve, Amy, Amy, it's unanimous. Okay, thank we have any paddle lodge parking lot. So service. this, yeah, right, so this is, a, thank you. This is a, uh, I asked RPW to come give us a proposal for survey of the wet waving paddle lodge parking area. Um, so this is the parking lot between the paddle and the pool. Uh, and during uh, our review with, with the Department of Justice, uh, the safe space again, the exact same problem we have or by the, the grades themselves or the space itself is, is very good. It's the path and travel to the paddle lodge. So as you're going to your area, um don't make don't be great and cross flow. Uh, so we asked them to come in, give an entire look of the parking lot since we're we're gonna be redoing that parking lot next year, year after to come forward with a plan uh to make sure that the grades are correct and will satisfy the department's needs, uh both departments' needs, I should say. RPW has extensive knowledge in Waveney Park itself mm -hmm. throughout the town. So instead of asking another consultant to come in and work and then have them try to come up to speed, get their own control points out there, things of that nature. We, uh, we typically default to RPW. And uh, we bid on a couple of projects in the past, and they were very close right there with the other bidders, which should say the other surveyors that were out there. When we bid meet park holistically, and they were very close, like almost to a, to a person. Great. So, Can we get a, uh, any question? Any other questions? Okay, can I get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works to enter into a contract with RPW land surveying in the amount of $4,100 to survey the paddle lodges, parking lot, and surrounding area? So, Steve, so Amy, it's unanimous. We have any carriage barn. All right, so this is a very similar situation, mm -hmm. only different location over the carriage barn itself. We have the exact same situation. Yes, okay. RPW is going to give us a proposal for this area. Okay, perfect. Can I get any questions? Yep. Can I get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works in partnership with the Carriage Barn Art Center to enter into a contract with RKW Land Surveying in the amount of seventeen hundred dollars to survey the Waveney Carriage Barn patio and surrounding area? Hello. Steve, Second. Amy, unanimous. Hey, Tiger, can you remember remind me what we put in the budget for a various ADA? Compliance, uh, yeah, the current budget, two fifty. And this is all within that. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this next one is uh, some additional fence work at Bristol. What we're seeing is that the deer are still able to overtop the fence itself. So we'd like to put uh, three cables on the top of the fence to basically extend the fence by about two feet. We have a lot of plantings that have been going on that were donated, and the, the, the deer themselves are starting to uh, enjoy themselves inside the park. Okay. Um, so this stretch along the railroad uh, is our primary means of access into the park. So we'd like to have the uh, fencing extended. We won't be extending the fabric. It's just a three cable rail at okay. the top. Great. Um, so we asked Gannon to come in. They came in. I added a Five hundred dollars just in case there was an extra foot or two that had to go, but I didn't put in fifteen percent. I felt you know right. I need a little bit of money just in yeah. case. Yes, yeah, Spencer should not have a lot of contingency. It's just well, along the train. <laughs> so yes, if I asked you go an additional ten yes. feet or two feet, I wanted to have it. You know, it's just along the train track. Just along. Yes, yeah, so you won't be able to see it from the road. Yeah, we won't yes. look like a prison. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> we won't look like a prison on it's one of the Yes, and, and this is going to sound odd, but there, there's no like from an uh, animal welfare. There's no risk of an animal getting stuck around the corner. Man, Greenleaf, we've had bad things with deer jumping yeah. over pokey fences. I saw it in the road, and it's it, uh, the lovely Fisher's so Island. We don't have any of that, they'll just bounce off. Yeah. Yes, okay, yeah, I, I know. Risk of, there, there always is a risk, sure, of tangle, but a low one. But, but there's a low risk. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Can I get a motion to approve a request from the Department of Public Works to enter into a contract with Gannon Rustic Fence in the amount of 30? 
$3,320 plus a contingency of $500 for a total cost of $3,820. And where's the project this entails from? the installation of 100 million. This is coming from, I believe it's coming from the Friends of Bristol. No, it's coming from the Parks Department budget. Okay. Yeah, Bristol you wouldn't budget, need to bring so, yeah. it for the um, Steve, yep. Amy, it's yep. unanimous. Okay. So the so last item is uh, an increase to the blanket purchase order from Madison Supply for uh, drainage pipe and uh, other appurtenances for the highway department. We were typically buying from two separate uh, uh, suppliers, one to try to make sure that we had two always two suppliers available in case one didn't have any anything, we could go to another. If you utilize just one supplier overall, the next time you call a guy says, yeah, I can get it for you, but it's not coming. The unfortunate thing is that one of the suppliers, Ferguson, is running into problems at present, providing a, work so we are uh, we're asking for the amount of money that we would typically spend combined to be um brought just for madison supply so uh the combined prior approvals for both ferguson and madison were sixteen thousand five hundred. um our three-year average is around thirty four thousand dollars we're just asking for an additional amount of thirty thousand dollars for a total of forty six thousand five hundred that's the estimate that we need to carry through the rest of the year and the monies are available on the highway department operating budget so why is it so much higher? I mean, that's that's you know ten thousand more than what our three-year average is today. We're thinking that, well because our, our the amount of drainage that we've been able to do, and right now we we have some areas where the, we're we're feeling the the, the need. Mm -hmm. So when I asked the highway department, they needed thirty thousand. They're so having drainage issues. We don't need it. We're not going to spend it. And the, the pipe also doesn't go bad. Yeah, if we okay. had you put it for stock to see when we put it for okay. stock. Like our first, okay. Year, yep. Right. Okay. That's it won't go bad. It'll, we will just be able to utilize it. So is this, uh, again, just a separate note about the policy. Is this like what we just did with Albie? Is that why we're doing it? It's, well, so because, well, one, this is $30,000. Yeah. So that should come to us anyway. But um, but we are having, if they go over, right. um, then once they are over the traditional where I sign, because you'll notice there's some um, POs in here that I had signed, but then Ann noticed that once I'd signed it, that actual amount had triggered that the purchase order was above the threshold where I should just, you know, the combined, not that individual one, but the combined purchase orders that we have done with that vendor had exceeded, exceeded. what yeah. the amount that I, you know, so it's just a transparency yeah. thing. I mean, if we, if you guys decide over time, you don't want me to do That's that. That's good. You know, accounting. Three I just meetings think, a week. That's all. <laughs> I know this is a big one because I think there's a lot that was in the backlog. I think what's right, we start for, right. This is exactly what well, we're also at that point now during right. the year where we're now right. going to trip over that the, right. the yeah. overall combined amount of ten thousand dollars. That's what we're right. At. And it, and it's also like for next year, the departments will be planning for this kind of process, and there'll be a, yeah. a larger upfront request. So I I think it's just we're feeling the pain of the transition in the process. Yep. So sorry guys. No problem. Right. I, I'm I enjoying our time together. <laughs> I didn't mention also, but both these are on the Connecticut state pricing. So okay. regardless of the supplier we use, we get the same price. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? If not, if I could get an approval of a request from the Department of Public Works to enter into a contract with Williams. No, that's the wrong page. Sorry. I'm on the wrong page. Approval of a request from the highway department to increase a previously approved blanket purchase order with Madam's Madison supply in the amount of $30,000, which will bring the total contract to $46,500 uh, for drainage materials needed for various projects. Steve, Amy, it's unanimous. Thank you. Thanks, Tiger. Thank you very much. Okay. Cheryl. Thank you, Tiger. Good morning. Good morning. We are here to present the first position for the police department for a police maintenance custodian. In the past, we have had Frank Tierney at that position who passed away in the mm -hmm. position. We looked at the position as a whole because they have moved. They're now in a building that is requiring a little less than what Frank's position required. Uh, they agreed to go to a part-time position. So for the next two years, uh, we are recommending a part-time position, and then they're going to look at the needs going forward. So we put a part-time application out. Uh, there was 31 applicants. We interviewed nine, and we would like to recommend Jerome Anderson, um, who 
has got a wide variety of um, experience in working with others, um, working at companies, being a laborer, and we felt after all the interviews that he would be the best candidate. Any questions? How, how many hours would, as I think? About um, 21, 22, mm -hmm. like three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, seven hours. Three, 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 three. And is this headcount, it's in the town headcount, not in the police department headcount? Or where, where's, where's the um, it's in the employee town, receipt? Because it's not um, one of our uni uniform okay. officers, so it, it goes on the town headcount. So it's okay. gone from a full-time to a part-time, but I don't want to sit here and say in two years when they move to the new building, they're going to need to probably go back to that. Yeah, one of the biggest things, because mm -hmm. it's a rental, they have a landlord who covers a lot of the big bigger issues but we do need somebody we're finding like just for day-to-day -day, some of the company vendors throughout the building when we there are repairs that need to be made shuttle cars back and forth for service um, there's a bunch of little things that um we absolutely need somebody there or but on a part-time per basis would be fine yeah fred was fred seemed to be busy like all oh, 10 hours a day and so there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on um, part time and it, it just didn't work so i figured this would be a good replacement until we do that. Yeah, and to that point, they've been fantastic with helping us with traffic counters and getting those up. Um, but it, it ends up becoming like a big ask. We need it done weekly. They have their own obligations to worry about. This person would help take care of that. Uh, can be as well. All right. All right. All right, great. Um, if there's no other questions, could I get the, a motion to approve a request from Human Resources Director to hire Jerome Anderson as a part-time police maintenance custodian? Steve, Amy, Second. it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, and then Cheryl, promotion. The next one is Jeff Manella in the highway department. He has just passed his supervisory spray license, so he will be promoted to an equipment operator to supervisory spray um, license within the highway department. Any questions? All right, if not, if I could get a motion to approve a request from the Human Resources Director to promote Jeff Manella to the position of Equipment Operator to Supervisory Spray License within the Highway Department. So, Amy, Steve, unanimous. Thank you. Okay. And then appointments and reappointments. Can I um, see before you, you have, um, I, I guess we can just go through each, the Tourism and Economic Development Advisory Committee, TDAC, um, she was seeing Kathleen Matterns. Um, I met her in my office. Um, she's great, young, new energy for TDAC. Came highly Marketing recommended. Sure. Yep. Tucker, any questions? Any questions? All right, so could I get a motion to approve um, the appointment of Catherine Mattern for a three year term ending December 1st, 2024? So moved. Second. Amy, it's unanimous. Thank you. Police Department Building Committee, appointment of Tom Turrentine. Oh. I'm here to say something nice about Tom. <laughs> <laughs> if not me, who? <laughs> Thank you very much. Any questions? No, Tom, Tom's been at meetings for a year plus. Be perfect. Well, and also Tom's done so much in town already. I mean, he's he's, he's a legend. So I, I fully endorse Tom's uh, service and thank him for the time he's going to put in here. So that's, I'm sure Bill will welcome him. Okay. All right. So could I get a motion to approve? appointing Tom Turrentine to the Police Department Building Committee. Amy, Second. Steve, Second. it's unanimous. Thank you. Um, Parks and Rec Commission, reappointment of Lindsay Heron and Hank Green for three-year terms ending December 1st, 2026. Both of their terms were ending and they both expressed a desire to continue. And um, so. They've done a great job yep, so far. they have. It's a happy place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so could I get a motion? Um, so moved. Amy, second. second um, of Lindsay and Hank Green for three year terms ending December 1st. It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, Board of Finance. Um, James Yao's term has ended and um, he expressed an interest in continuing his service. So if I could get a motion to reappoint James Yao as an alternate member for a two year term ending December 1st, 2025. That's amazing how quick that went. It seems like just got on. Well, it's only two years. Yeah. It's like yeah. alternates are two years. Yeah. yeah. James, James has done a great job in watching yeah. those meetings. Uh, it yeah. adds a lot to the uh, conversation. So yeah. thank you to James for his service and I will make the motion. Thank you, Steve. Amy, Second. it's unanimous. Okay. And Conservation Commission, reappointment of John Fusick and Susan Schweitzer for two-year terms ending December 1st, 
2025. And I reached out to both of them. They expressed a desire to continue on the commission. So can I get a motion to so me? Second. Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, and then you have on your tablets contracts under ten thousand um, dollars or ten thousand and under. Any questions? Thanks, Bill. Okay, thank you, Bill. Yeah. Okay, if there are no questions, we'll move on to uh, overpayments, approval of refunds or tax overpayments. Um, does anybody have mm -hmm. any questions? They just are. Yep. Okay. So um, if I could get a motion to approve refunds and tax overpayments. Sure. Steve, Sorry. Amy, it's unanimous. And then um, you have also the legal bills on your tablets. Um, so any questions or concerns? Okay, if not, could I get a motion to approve the legal fees? So moved. Steve, Amy, it's unanimous. Okay, any, I have no comments. Oh, <laughs> Do you want to ask? Come on. Come on. I have no comments today. Any other comments? No. Okay, Let's moving move. on. We have um, an executive session plan for today. So if, uh, who's who's the three yeah. of us? Me. Tucker. Don't. Russ. 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 Okay, so you need to leave. Yeah, so we just make Oh, can I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Second. It's unanimous. Okay. Thank you, guys. I'm going to hit the page real quick. You may, take um, a second. I'll be right back. I put 79 in the way. Yeah, make me host. Make me host. Ah, please. So next year, Harper Murphy, they're going to potential vendor. And then you can end that one there. They're going to. Okay. And you can end that one. So okay. as opposed to a 1550. Don't end it, just leave. And so then I'll be like, okay, so I'm expecting. So fast. We're still 75,000. So we won't be here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Spending this much money. He's in a suit. I Okay, we're back. Okay. Um, could I get a motion to approve a memorandum of understanding among certain local institutions regarding security procedures applicable to massive evacuation events? So look, second. second. Steve, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. And could I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Steve, Amy. Not before 11. It's it's pretty pretty simple. I have a mess around. No, you were, right. you're moving fast. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Like, I know. Did, Amy, did, like, you, did you hear all of a sudden, Deanna went like, you know, when you, you play back something, I'm going to do 1.5 speed. 